God is so good to us. I'm so thankful to be able to be with you this morning to worship you, or wor- worship the Lord, not you, but worship with you the Lord. Let me just start over. I, at least I've got my mic on this morning, Matthew. <laughs> yeah, I know. <laughs> it's good to be with you. It's good to be able to worship with you. It's good to be together, to concentrate upon the Lord. And every time that Sunday rolls around, I get excited and, and I just feel like this is the way that, that this week should begin every single time. And I'm thankful for that. We have uh, several that are not with us this morning. Our youth group is at the Robinson and Center Church of Christ in Conway for Youth, Outre- youth Outreach University. Uh, a number of years ago, uh, I had a hand in starting that program uh, when I was serving as youth minister at the Liberty Church of Christ. And uh, so that was, I think, like 2004, 2005, something like that. And so we've been doing that for several years. And it seems interesting that my, now my daughter is there, uh, a part of that weekend. And I'm thankful for it. It's really a weekend that is designed to encourage our youth to be evangelistic. It's Youth Outreach University. And so it's an, the idea is that we will educate and encourage our kids uh, to go and teach their friends. And I get behind that 100%, and I hope you do as well. But that is where our youth group is. Usually some of them are sitting over here and dispersed among us, and, and a lot of them are there. Uh, and some of our adults are there as chaperones as well. And so... Uh, we, we know they're coming back this, this uh, afternoon, and I hope they come back enthusiastic and motivated to share the gospel of Jesus Christ. Matthew preached last week on the beginning, in the beginning, and we looked at the creation story and compared it to Psalm 104, and uh, we intentionally titled both of these sermons this morning, the same, in the beginning. My approach this morning is really to just look at one verse. Now, we'll mention some others and we'll quote from some others, but for the most part, we're going to just look at Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. Because in this one simple verse, we can learn so much. It was Herbert Spencer, I wrote this in the, uh, in the front of your bulletin, that Herbert Spencer, this uh, this man who was uh, an atheist, um, a man, a uh, scientist, uh, articulated that there are five manifestations of all scientific phenomena that can be found in nature. And these are simply put as time, force, action, space, and matter. Those five things. And what's interesting about that is while he may have articulated that in the 19th century, it has gone through the inspiration of Moses that articulates it at the very beginning of the Scriptures. In the beginning, li- quite literally, in the beginning, God did these things, these five things. We can find all five of these scientific discoveries, time, force, action, space, and matter, in these simple ten words that are found in Genesis chapter 1. Right there in the very beginning. For God created the heavens and the earth. Ten simple words. Seven actually in the Hebrew text. But ten words in our English language. These words introduce the entire history of the universe. In the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. And actually, they really lay this foundation for an entire way of looking and seeing and understanding and inhabiting the world that we live in. It's not an exaggeration by no means to look at these few simple words and say that these words absolutely establish and are essential for us to understand what the universe is who we are in the universe, and who God is in relation to the universe. In these simple words that God created the heavens and the earth. 
This morning I want us to take a scientific approach, but also an exegetical approach. And what I mean by that is just looking at this one verse and understanding what it means, bringing out the message behind it. I want us to be able to discover in this simple verse, scientifically and theologically, that God is responsible for all the things that exist. Because, number one, it is God. God, in the beginning, created time to set things in motion. This is the historical point when things came to be. There was nothing before the earth. There was no sun, no moon, nor no man to exist on the earth. This is the very beginning. There was only one God, one God. And in His infinite knowledge and power and wisdom and in His love, He created everything. Specifically, He creates time. You see, time is, is the beginning right here. Because before the beginning of our universe, there was no schedule, there was no timeline, no calendar, no calendar, calendar notifications, no deadlines to meet, nothing like that. God, in the beginning, He created time. Everything that flows from this moment on, from the very beginning, is the history of all things. Time is what God created first by the movements of seconds, minutes, hours, days, months, years. He starts it right here, leading up to this moment right now in time that we are sitting in this place together. Time was started right there in the very beginning. Because... Not only did God create time, but God is the force for how all things came to be. God is the force behind it. In Psalm 96, in verse 5, it says, For all the gods of the peoples are idols, but the Lord, the Lord made the heavens. Matthew's been talking quite a bit about idol worship right now in his Isaiah class. And I love how passionate he gets about these people that are taking these chunks of wood and carving them out and then placing them on their mantle and asking these idols to do all these great things and God is looking down at them and saying, you idiots, you idiots, I, I made the wood that you carved out. This God that you are praying to, this God that you idolize is nothing but a chunk of wood that you have fashioned and I made it and I made you. And you should know better. The psalmist says, there's many of these idols, but the Lord is the one who made the heavens. Jeremiah 10 and verse 12 says, It is He who made the earth by His power, who established the world by His wisdom and by His understanding. He has stretched out the heavens. It is God who's responsible. It is God who is the force. There's no idols. There's no mention of other gods. In this verse in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. It rules out everyone else. There's no Thor. There's no Gozer. There's no Atlas. None of that. It's only God. God is the force behind every aspect of who that is. And everything that happened behind in Genesis chapter 1. It's tempting to think that God enters the story right here. But not, no, that's not the case at all. That's totally wrong. God already, already was, already is right now, and He is to come. And you've already heard that sermon for sure. It's not that God enters the story in Genesis chapter 1. It is that we, the universe, and us, we all enter into God's story. It's His life. He already was. It's the universe that enters into this passage in Genesis chapter 1 and verse 1. And so because in the beginning, God created and put into action His will for all things. All things owe their origin to God. 
every aspect of it. He spoke the creation into existence. When you get a chance, read through Genesis chapter 1 and just notice how many times it says, then God said, then God said, then God said. And it was. And after he he created all things, he says it was good. And after he created man, and he looks at everything, including man, he says that it was very good. It's God. God, by His will, by His Word, creates all things. In Psalm 33, in verse 6, it says, By the Word of the Lord, by the Word of the Lord, the heavens were made, and by the breath of His mouth all of their host. In Hebrews chapter 11 and verse 3, the Hebrew author says, By faith we understand that the worlds were prepared by the word of God, so that what is seen was not made out of things which are visible. You see, there's a big distinction between things that are made and things that are created. And when God creates something, He creates it out of nothing. He speaks it into existence. That's something that you and I cannot do. Anything that we might make is by by us taking things or materials that already exist and forming it into something else. We take things and we make things. You bake a cake. You build a kitchen countertop. You take materials and you form them together to make something. God says. God says and it happens. There's a big difference between what was made and what is created. It is by God, by His will, that He put these things into action. And so you want to know why why are you here? Well, God put you into action when He created all things. Because in the beginning, God created the heavens as His space to accomplish His will. He created the heavens to have as a space to accomplish His will. All the cosmos, everything around us, is really, it's just amazing to think about, is God's playground in a sense it's it's a place for him to to do his loving and righteous and and, uh, knowledgeable will this is his place to do these things it is where he has chosen to do his will this is where he speaks light into existence says in the very beginning that god created the heavens and the earth and he spoke light he said let there be light Let there be light. It's amazing to think about how God just speaks things into existence. I I love to make this comparison, and it's very common to do so. When you compare in the beginning from Genesis chapter 1 to in the beginning of John chapter 1 verse 1. Because John says, in the beginning was the what? Word! In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was was God. He spoke it into existence. John goes on to say in verse 14, he says, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us and we beheld His glory, the glory of the only begotten Son of God, full of grace and truth. Amazing to think about. How in the beginning, it is by God's Word that He speaks these things into existence and He uses this place this space to speak these things into existence. He created the heavens as His playground to do His will. Because in the beginning, God created the earth for where living matter is to dwell. And listen, I know, you think, well, not everything on earth is living. The rocks are not necessarily living. And I get that. And there's things that are in the cosmos that are not living, but God created those things as well. But just just go with me here. I really struggle with, should I put living and non-living matter? Well, it doesn't even matter. Matter. (laughs) God created the earth for where we are to, to dwell. And that's amazing to me. All the land and the air and the seas, God has created it all. And He made the deepest of chasms for us to see in the seas. Do you know where the deepest chasm is on planet Earth? Do you know? 
Anybody know just off the top of your head? You could, that's it. You got it. The Mariana Trench. Do you know where the Mariana Trench is? Do you know, Adrian? It's in the Pacific Ocean, right off the coast of Guam. Amazing place. This trench goes 36,000 feet below the surface of the water, all the way down. There's a, a fellow by the name of James Cameron. Do you all know who James Cameron is? James Cameron made uh, the movie Titanic and uh, The Abyss. You remember the movie The Abyss uh, and uh, Avatar? This is James Cameron. James Cameron, in his playtime, has a submarine, and he has, he has explored the Mariana Trench, taken this submarine called the Challenger down into this trench, 36 thousand feet below the surface of the water and you think well is that really is that deep oh yes yes my friends that's very deep let me just show you this is amazing to me i got so excited this is my favorite part of the whole sermon okay this is amazing so it's thirty six thousand feet below the surface of the water mount everest the tallest peak that god created as well is twenty nine thousand twenty eight feet high Mount Everest could be at the bottom of Mariana Trench. And still, it would be almost two miles from the peak of Mount Everest to the surface of the waters. You think, well, is that really that much? Oh, yes, let me show you this graphic. You ready? Let's, you can Google these things. I just Googled and found them. Five Empire State Buildings could sit at the peak of Mount Everest and finally reach to the top of the surface of the waters. God created the heavens and the earth all the way down to that deep chasm and all the way up to the highest peak of Mount Everest, 29,000 feet above sea level, and Mount Everest can sit in here. That's our God. That's the God that created the heavens and the earth. On this blue little marble of land, it was God's will to place you here right now on this day. Caleb read for us just a moment ago. Where's Caleb at? Is he in here? Yeah. Is he there? Oh, there you are, buddy. Hey, good job reading. We gave him two scriptures this morning to read. That doesn't happen very often. Thank you so much. Psalm 96, verses 1 through 2. What Caleb read for us is this. Sing to the Lord a new song. Sing to the Lord all the earth from the deepest of chasms to the highest peaks. Sing to the Lord. Sing to the Lord. Bless His name. Proclaim good things of salvation from day to day. Listen, North Heights. Sing to the Lord. All of you. All of you, North Heights. Bless His name, North Heights. Proclaim good things of salvation 24-7, day to day. From the time that the sun comes up until it comes down and then it comes back up again all day long, 24 hours a day, 7 days a week, it is our obligation to sing to the Lord who made the earth. From the deepest of chasms to the highest of peaks. Why? Because in the beginning, God created the heavens and the earth. Such a simple little thing for us to learn. And if you think He didn't do that, then how in the world are you here today? What a great opportunity that we have to sing praises to God. Not just because He created at the very beginning, the time, and that God is the force. And He created as in His action the heavens, the space, and the earth, the matter. All those things that scientists say happen in nature, scientifically, all were written and pinned down by Moses thousands of years ago. Sure, God created the heavens and the earth. And we sing and praise Him for that. But God also sent His Son. God also provides a way of salvation. So that if you're not believing, and if you want to believe, you can make that transition in your life from living a life of wickedness, a life of not acknowledging that God created all things, to a life that is absolutely dedicated to the maker of all things, God. Because in the beginning, He did all these things.
If you need to respond to the Lord's invitation, come as together we stand and as we sing.